Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez with SolidBox, and today we're going to take a look at Power Surfacing 2.0 Beta. Now, the reason I specifically call out 2.0 Beta is this is the first time that some of the new functionality has been released to us. The new functionality that I'm going to talk about in this video is constraining to existing SolidWorks geometry. Now, if you've been using Power Surfacing before, if you had access to the alpha release, or if you've been using 1.4 or some of the previous versions, you know the power of using sub-D modeling inside of SOLIDWORKS. You can make some very nice organic shapes very quickly and very easily. But what you couldn't do was attach it to any of your existing SOLIDWORKS models. So if you were using a previous release, you would have to make some of your geometry, and then most likely you would have to trim it and make a surface that goes between your existing SOLIDWORKS geometry and the power surfacing geometry. But now in 2.0 beta, we can use an import reference option and actually get access to that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this simple teapot example that I've created, and this is a revolved part, and you'll notice that I split the face. If we look at this from the front view, what I've done is I've made a split and I'm going to use this as my import reference. And the reason I'm doing this is because this is a revolved part. If you import this part or if you create it in SOLIDWORKS, you have a lot of information here. And what I want to do is I want to bring in just a smaller patch. It makes it much easier to work with once we're in power surfacing. So now that we have the base model here, what I'm going to do is create a primitive. Now we could create any different primitive here. We could create a surface or we could add some sketches and create a surface from a sketch. But what I'm going to do is create a cylinder and I need to size this thing down a bit. I'm going to use six sided cylinder. I'm going to reduce the radius down to one and I'm going to reduce its height down to three inches. I'm going to leave the side segments and cap segments the same and I'm also going to leave it created on the top plane. Now once I do that, I'll do a mass selection and just bring it into the view where I can see it. I want to move it up roughly in place and rotate it around because what we're going to be doing is making a spout here. Now, if for some reason we've made it too big, we can rotate this thing around in 3D, grab the cube at the center, and we can scale this thing in 3D. So as we look at it, go ahead and move it around where we want. And now I'm actually going to rotate this thing around just slightly so that I have a good normal view selection. I'm going to change my selection filters to faces, and I'm going to grab some of these end faces. What I want to do is actually delete these. Now the reason I'm deleting these faces is because I want to work with a surface. What I'm going to do is take this surface and attach it to my SOLIDWORKS model. In order to do this, I need to bring in some references. From your power surfacing tab, we can go to import reference. This is going to allow us to select an entity, for instance, this face that we have, and we can bring that in. You'll notice that you have some options here. There is a subdivision level at the bottom, but for the most part, you're just going to want to select that and bring it in. Now that we have this, there are a few things that we can do. Our import reference dropdown has a few options. Now you notice that we have update constraints, clear constraint data, and toggle constraint visibility. But if we actually go up to tools, power surfacing, and down to our constraints menu, you notice there are actually quite a bit more options in here. Constraint to face, edge, vertex. These are all things that pop up based on your selection. So what I first want to do is select an edge. And I'm going to select an edge loop so I'm going to select this entire edge loop and I'm going to use my constrain to edge. So what this does is this brings this down and constrains it to the edge of my imported reference. Now you notice this thing looks a little bit funny, doesn't it? Well, that's because of the number of divisions I had, the resolution of my part. So if I go back to my selection process, I can grab individual points and these are constrained or rather they're fixed to the edge here. So even though I'm grabbing a slider, I can move them around and sort of pull them around and pull them wherever I need to and get that geometry right. I can also divide this up more. Now, if the subdivision in this specific instance isn't enough, we can go ahead and we can make a selection and we can insert loops. So for instance, if we want to insert a loop here, maybe we want to add multiples, we can do that and quickly and easily change how this thing enters and exits. So once we say OK, can look at this thing from the front, look at it from the side, and we can make adjustments. If we need to grab these edges and pull them in, or if we need to grab a loop, for instance, we can take that loop and we can scale it in all dimensions. We can grab this loop, scale it in all dimensions, and we can push and pull, move it around, do whatever we need to do with it. If we need more divisions on this edge, we can do things like hold down the A key, we can make a division in here, 
take this point, maybe pull it closer to the bottom center, and so on. Now, if you have to have symmetry in your part, it's probably a good idea to split the entire part up and only work with half of this. That way you can ensure symmetry. But in this case, I wanted to just show you the process of how we can attach to the imported reference geometry. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay, I'm gonna bring this into SolidWorks. So now inside of SolidWorks, we have a solid model. That is our original model. And then we have this power surface body. So if I hide this, we need to attach it. So we're gonna to go to surfaces and we can either make an offset of this or we can simply delete that face altogether. Now, if we delete this face altogether, we now have our power body that exactly matches that geometry. It has tangency, it blends into this nicely. We can knit them together. So I'm gonna go ahead and knit them together. I'm gonna to form a solid. So now if we do a section view, you can see that we have a solid body here. We have a complete solid body. We have really nice curvature as it goes into and out of that edge and a really nice blended geometry. Of course, I didn't spend a whole lot of time on this shape, but just note how well that we can blend to existing SOLIDWORKS geometry. The next thing I wanna show you is how we can update the scale of this model. So for instance, if we went back to the original revolve feature, let's go ahead and edit this original revolve feature. Maybe the radius of this part was a little bit larger. So you'll notice that the surface knit fails. Now, of course it fails because our original part is no longer attached to it. You'll notice the surface body that we created using power surfacing doesn't really match where the new feature is. So we have to go back into power body and inside here we have some options. So from our power surfacing menu, we can take a look at a few different things or we can go to power surfacing and we can look at our constraints and you see that we can update constraints. Now, if we update this, you'll notice that it pulled it back out to our new reference because our reference was a selected face inside SOLIDWORKS. It was actually able to pull that back out. We say, okay, we create the new power surfacing body and there we go. Now we're reattached. We can re-knit it and recreate that solid. Now, important thing to note here is the only thing that moved was the actual geometry at the face. The rest of our geometry didn't change or didn't move. So this is really great if you have a lot of detail worked into the rest of your model, but for some reason you need to tweak the original shape, the original size, something moves, whatever the case might be. You now have that flexibility to deal with it. If you have any questions on this, please let us know. Matt at mysolidbox.com and we'll be glad to help you out. Thanks for watching.